Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Today, I'm joined by Michael from... Are you London kid, Michael, aren't you? London. London boy, yeah. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It was a good day. Yeah. Are you uh, Where are you living nowadays? London still, yeah? Yeah, still live in East London. Still live in East London. Whereabouts? Uh, not far from Stratford. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then. Uh, I'm trying to think what topic we could start with. So what I was thinking we'd do, did you see the Carl Frampton interview? I haven't seen it, no. No, all right. well, I'll play a little bit from it and you can tell me what you think. Of course, we're not going to accuse anybody because we don't know full facts, but this is what Carl Frampton had to say. Relationship. I'm just out of a. How is the relationship with the McGuigans now? Oh, it's death. Does it fuck now? No, there's, there's no relationship. I'm just out of a court case with them, um, which was settled. Um, it was a sort of settle, so no one can say they won or anything. Mm. But what I can say is I'm very fucking happy with the settlement. Yeah. I can say that. So, um, but there's no relationship. I fucking despise them. All of them hate them. And, um, just, just the way it is. It's sad that that, it always, is sad. that always happens though it with boxers happen and trainers and but, when it comes to money and fucking this, people just, why is that? Like, yeah, look, I like to think of myself as a nice guy and I trust everybody and like I love these guys. Like I had Shane and Jake McGuigan as groomsmen at my wedding. I was a groomsman at Shane's wedding. But, so the brothers basically? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, but... I have a deep hatred for them now, and all of them, and I wouldn't fucking piss on them if they're on fire. I genuinely make them hate. Well, there you go. That's Carl Frampton. Uh, obviously, I think the relationships, uh, I think the relationship between the McGuigan family and, uh, and uh, I think the relationship between the McGuigans and Frampton's family has probably gone down a little bit now, but we don't know what's gone on. There's two sides to every story. And I'm not going to sit here slagging Barry McGuigan off because I like him. And I like Carl Frampton. And so we don't know full facts. There's no facts been disclosed, has there? They just settled out of court, so can't really say anything. Yeah. Uh, but... I don't, know. I don't know what to make of it all. To be I think it's sad, isn't it, really, that it's got to that stage. What do you think, Michael? Well, of course, um, it would be <clears throat> it would be unfair for me to take either side because there's not enough information. But it, it's just sad to hear the things he said. He said, I hate them, I despise them. How has it got to this point? You know, I've met Frampton before, really nice kid. It, it's just a shame boxing does this. You know, so many people fall out, especially over money. I mean, there's two sides to every story, but a lot of a lot of promoters, managers, type of guys, they get a lot of stick, don't they? But it, we go back to the Steve Goodwin situation with Dion Juma, who's who's just left Steve, and Steve's done a great job for him, and you know, contracts come to an end, and Steve's put him in a good position, and he's not shown his loyalty, so. It does happen both ways, but we don't. There's a, the black as there's always two sides to every story that. The rules in boxing and regulations and everything is it's there for everybody to fall out and argument oh. and argue over. For example, I'll throw a little curveball at you now. Uh, Tommy Frank's just been beat, and he's Dennis Hobson's fighter. He's fighting for a British title against K.O. Youssef. Now, you're supposed to fight for a British title coming off a win, but they've bypassed that. So... Is it the boxing board of control or is it the boxing board of no control? Is it one rule for one and one rule for other? Because that could come back to bite him in arse now down the line because if other managers want to get their kids into position for a British title and they say, yeah, well, you've just come off a lot. You've just come off a loss, so you need a win. They can then pull it up with their lawyers and say, well, whoa, look what you did with Tommy Frank. He got beat. But you put yeah. you then put him in for a British, you know. So the the rules are there to be uh, manipulated, and 
this is why it is so easy to to fall out with people in boxing because there's no, there's no rules. It's the wild, wild west. And it's every man for themselves. Uh, people say and do what they want, and <clears> it's the law of the jungle. And if you've not got lions behind you, if you've got mice behind you, you ain't going nowhere, are you? If you've got mm. lions behind you, you're going to be all right, aren't you? So it, look, it is what it is, isn't it? But getting back to Frampton McGuigan, I just think it's sad because they were all so pretty tight, weren't they? But when the big money came in, well, once the big money came in, it uh, it all seemed to, that's where it all arg arguments come in, don't it, on both sides. So what do you think? Yeah, you know, you've made a lot of great points. Um, I think money has a way of corrupting people. It changes people. But um, you mentioned Steve Goodwin. Um, I think Steve Goodwin's a very likable person. I think I went to see him, I think May 2019, I went to his office and he basically told me, as you said, it goes both ways because there's fighters he's done so much for. And yeah. then they'll tell you, I love you, Steve. Thank you so much. You've done so much for me. And the next thing you know, they've left you and they don't even tell you why. And yeah. I, I, know, I know somebody in boxing, a, a, a former Steve Goodwin fighter, um, I won't name him. I don't think it's anything serious. I don't think it's necessary to name him. But basically, let Steve Goodwin. And he was slagging him off to me in private. Steve Goodwin's this, Steve Goodwin's that. I asked him 10, 15, 20 times. But when I said to him, all right, so what did Steve actually do? And then he'll tell you, he would never actually answer the question. Oh, Steve's this and he's... I said, all right, but what did he actually do? And the whole thing was basically Steve can't get him a shot or whatever. I tried explaining it to the guy, you're not ranked, you're not really ranked anywhere, you're not a name, you're, you're not, he wouldn't listen to sense, and then he left Goodwin, his career didn't go anywhere, and then he retired, but I'll, I'll be nice, I won't name him, but it right. does go both ways. Yeah, it does, all right, then we're moving on from that, uh, Bricktop's mental health, uh, he's had COVID, but he's seen it off, I mean, somebody once said to me that he, uh, he could survive a nuclear blast. What do you think? Yeah, he'll probably outlive you and me. Bricked up, of course he will, mate. He, uh, he's been shot. He's been bankrupt God knows how many times. He's had loads of battles. He's, he's not been well, but I think we have to give Frank Warren a bit of credit. He's a fighter, isn't he? He's got fighting spirit inside, his, inside him. And if he'd have been a fighter, he'd have probably been a Euro level, wouldn't he? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, apparently something happened between him and Mike Tyson once. Well, he still lived to tell the tale. He's had, he, he's in, he's been in the thick of it, hasn't he? So we wish him well. Uh, moving on then. Floyd Mayweather's air transplant. What do you think to that? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's it's like it's come out of nowhere. Um, and yeah, he's fighting some silly little YouTube fight. Or, you know, ridiculous. Yeah, it's, uh, excuse me, you're it's been a 14 hour day for me today. Uh, all right, then. Shelly Finkel and Deontay Wilder. It looks like there's some intense beef there and it's going, going to arbitration and they're saying it could be April, May. So that means Tyson Fury is going to be parked up 15 months without a date. Do you see it being resolved or do you see the Americans digging the heels in? Don't forget, I called this last March. And everybody said, okay, you're crazy. I also said that Ben Davison will train Wilder. So I don't know. We don't know who's training Wilder, do we? But I did call the fact that it's going to be a long drawn out job. And we're, we're 11 months down line here and Tyson's still not got a date, has he? What do you think? No. Where, do you think where do you see it all ending? Uh, where do you see it all going, Michael? Okay, I mean, you're very perceptive. I've followed your channel for quite a while. Yeah. You, you make a lot of great predictions. I just think Wilder's reaction to losing to Fury is very strange. All right, you lost to a fighter. There's no shame in that. But coming out with all the excuses, blaming this guy, blaming that guy. If I met Wilder, I mean, mate, you lost the fight. It's not an issue. So your question was, where do I see it going? Just going to drag out for months and months, a year, two... You know, I, I don't know what Wilder's going to do in his career. Um, do I think Fury Joshua happens this year? Probably not. Not with all this stuff happening. Um, I just think it's going to drag out. 
I mean, Shelly Finkel, he's not going to let it go without a fight, I, ima I imagine. You know, he's just going to drag out. Shelly Finkel's a big dog, you know. He's been at this game for a year. They, they've put some of the biggest fights to ever happen, ever, ever, ever. And so, you know, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, it put that on. and he's, yeah. Mike Tyson's advisor manager for years. So I don't see him rolling over. He'd never do you a favour. And oh, I, I think yeah. Eddie Earn spinning all these narratives all the time. I think he just looks like a salesman, really, just filling us all full of rubbish, isn't it? That's what it looks to me. It doesn't look like the fight's even close, but they, we keep seeing it and people keep... I mean, look, the wheeled Johnny Nelson out. Again, here, look, Johnny Nelson wheeled out on, on IFL and the Matthew Macklin, the same old... It's... It, it's the same old stories, but pe people being wound out and it, we, being wheeled out to spin the same old narratives. And people keep saying boxing uh, deserves funding and that. Well, these people here that are telling lies and trying to keep the public interested so the fight's big for next year, these people are what's wrong with boxing. These people are what's wrong because they're not being truthful to fans. The fans can't invest any more time in Fury versus Joshua. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm coming to end the tether with it. And I, I speak to people all the time. People come up to me and you should see some of the emails I get now. People have had enough. And it ain't just hardcore fans. There's casual fans are saying, well, you're right, Russ. Well, how much longer do we have to listen to this garbage? Garbage, but, innit? No, but this is the problem with boxing. Now, I agree boxing deserves funding, but when these people are saying boxing deserves funding, but you idiots are the ones that are messing it up because mm. I, look, I've been around boxing a long time. I'm a 30-year-old man now. I work in construction. By the time I get home, it's about 7 o'clock. I'm not interested in sitting down and watching people like Johnny Nelson and Matthew Macklin and Bean. I don't really want to watch your stupid interviews. All I want to see, just tell me the week of the fight. Tell me the day before. When's Fury going to fight Joshua? Don't sell us these lies. Because the thing with Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn controls the media, doesn't he? Yeah. He controls, yeah. he controls seconds out and he controls behind the gloves. And he dictates. He, he controls to... four or five YouTubers. They're in his pocket and they know not to go against the grain. I know that because I've heard back off more than one person. I've heard back off people in media, former champions, trainers who are active today. We know what goes on. But the narrative now is out of control. And it's just the man in the streets, like, they're just as confused as us. And I don't think it's fair what's going on. I don't think it's fair at all, mate. I don't think well, it's, it's, it's frustrating because I don't... Look, I've met most people in boxing. I've met Johnny Nelson, I've met Eddie Hearn, I've met Anthony Joshua, I've met Tyson. Johnny Fury. Nelson, God, is that high point in your life? Of course not, of course not. <laughs> but what I'm, trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, I don't really want to hear what you've got to say. Yeah. Just put the fight on. But you're, you're, you're trying to... Uh, look at any other sport. Other sports, the best compete against the best every year. Yeah. In boxing, you've got fights not happening for five, six, seven years, or not happening at all. But then they're wheeling out people like Johnny Nelson, whoever, to spin fake narratives. And I mean, this is the problem. Like, why? Why? It's like a merry-go-round. It's, like, it's, 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 it's the boring. same old merry-go-round, isn't it? Dave Caldwell, Johnny Nelson, Matthew Macklin. It's the same old. We're going around in circles with it. Then Eddie Earns office. Then, then back to square one. Then, it, then, then it's on another channel. The same people and the same people. And I'm like. But I just don't. I, I don't watch it. We're mad at me. Oh, we need we need Porky. We need you on Sky Sports. You straighten oh, them out. I work for them. I don't need to work for anybody. I can just do what I do till, till another twenty years. I could do this and tick over like this. I'm in a good position. But I wouldn't piss on them like if they were on fire, mate. That's Sky <laughs> Sky I, I won't oh, honestly, but at least I say I hope the the roof comes tumbling down at Sky and they all get made redundant. The lot of them. And that and the, they put new people in. The lot need to go. All the lot of them need to go at Sky. It's just getting it's it's getting sad. Bring Paul Dempsey back. Do you know what I mean? Bring people like him back. Uh, yeah. You know. You know. Gabriel Clark. Uh, look, it need, it needs Ian Dark. It, it need it needs sorting out because. 
they're pushing this narrative now and it's pantomime villain stuff and it, it's crept into it. It didn't at first, but it's crept into it in this last 10 years and it's embarrassing now, especially when I turn my telly on in the night time and I'm chilled out, I sit here with a beer, turn it on and I look at UFC and what their cards are for the weekend and then I look what they're serving up at Sky and I'm like, look at rankings on these UFC kids here. And they're all top-notch fights. Yes. And then look, look at what we're, what, we're, what we're being fed. Look at what we're being fed. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah, but all right, let me give you an example. If you look at football, every time I look on Twitter, or, so every other week, football's trending. There's somebody's played a game, somebody's oh, yeah. scored a goal. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go on, you go on, keep talking. Yeah, go on. Oh, yeah. So it's like with football... There's, there's always interesting matches going on. When is the last last time in British boxing you would say there was an in, interesting show on? I mean, you had Joshua versus um, Kubat Pulev recently, but I wasn't really, I didn't really find it much. Did you watch Joshua Pulev? Yeah, I did, yeah. But, I mean, it just it wasn't really, for me, I think the last Joshua fight I really enjoyed, I, I liked the first Ruiz fight, and I was quite, <coughs> you know. But there's there's not enough excitement in British boxing. We're not seeing enough classic fights. We're not seeing good enough cards. Like half the fight, I don't even bother turning it on these days. You know, like half half the time you got mismatches. You got people like Shannon Courtney and Campbell. What's his name? Campbell Hatton on pay per view. For these, these are not pay per view fighters. Like, I'm 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 not paying for this. I mean, it's like Shannon Courtney credit. She's a trier on that, but skill level wise, uh, she's a novice, isn't she? But she's in a world title fight in a couple of months. Rachel Ball's a novice, skill level wise, uh, but they're going to get world title fights, and, and it's just how boxing's going at the moment. We have to put up with it, so we have to invest in these characters. But the narratives are being spun. It, it, it's, 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 I don't know. Shannon Courtney came out with a load of racist stuff, apparently, didn't she, on her Twitter? And somebody, oh, yeah, I've seen it. Someone showed right. yeah. Nobody said a word about it. But if it had been, I don't know, anybody else, it might have been a different story. Do you know what I mean? But I just think we have to have some... Uh, it has to be evened out what's happening, how people are being treated in boxing. There's kids parked up who are not getting fights at the moment, and we, we all know who they are, don't we? I mean, for example, Marcus Morrison, who's he trained him? Uh, wait, is who's it he Joe with? Gallagher? Joe Gallagher. Well, Marcus Morrison, what, what, is, what is he? 27 year old. Um, he's uh, he fought as a B side on a matchroom show in Italy, didn't he? As the B side against Blander Armour and knocked him out, didn't he? And that was two years ago. So they've not they've not given him. They've not given him a well, it was 18 months ago actually, but they've not given him a a date, have they? Since then he's and he's had a couple of fights since then on on a on a, a small all show in Manchester. But on Joe Gallagher's M22 promotions, I think but the point I want to make is I thought he's gone over there that's B side, knocked him out. Where where's his where's his pot of gold now? What, what, what's happened? What's happened to him? What's he done wrong? It's not so long ago Eddie Hearn was saying, oh, he's a good kid. He could have been, could have played for Man City at football. He looks the part and uh, they were hanging out at the back of him. And then they put him in, they, they, put, they put him in with a couple of people that maybe he weren't ready for and they thrown him away like rubbish. He's come back, beat a matchroom guy in Italy because he, trust me, they only want to bland armor to win that, you know, because it was matchroom Italy. See yeah. where they're coming from, don't you? He's gone out there and stopped him. No, for him, he's parked up. It's like Usek's been parked up, hasn't he, we had Ian. He, um, he's had two fights, hasn't he? Two fights. We, we, we had Ian since he won that WBSS. Who's the other one parked up? Who's all Lewis Otis, they parked him up, didn't they, Matt Jones? Just about, yeah, just about to say him. I Park remember when he, he came over here, they signed him. Eddie signed Ortiz to keep him away from Joshua. That's why yeah. I think. You don't want no big punching, slick Cuban southpaw in with their pot of gold, Joshua, do they? No. Do you know what I mean? So that's parked up. That's behind, that's chess moves behind behind the, the chessboard, isn't it? What's going on behind the scenes. But I don't want to see all that. I just want to see, look, 
he's a world level fighter, he is. Put them in together. We're not bothered about who walks out first or where it's at, although we'd like it to be in England. Pay per view. Let's get on with fight. Put a good fight on, and people will pay. You know, pay per view, right? It was one of them things where it's one of them nights where you're not supposed to miss it, isn't it? Oh, we can't miss this. It's on pay per view. That's when it first came out, wasn't it? Do you remember the first one, Frank Bruno against Oliver McCall? Remember? And now we've I got seen it. now we've got pay per view. Dylan White against Povetkin. It's pay per view. All oh, right, how's that? Thought it was supposed and, to be special nights. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and it, and this is where the mindset's gone from that mindset in mid nineties to this mindset now. And and now we're entering the YouTuber era. Everybody just thinks they can be a YouTuber, get popular, and be a boxer. You could imagine somebody like that going up to Jurgen Klopp and saying, "Yeah, can you put me on wing for Liverpool?" Uh, it's all right. I'll pay, you, I'll pay you millions of pounds to play or come on as a sub in. In a Man City game, can you imagine that? Eh? Boxing is the only only sport is boxing where you can get away with it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's uh, I don't know. Like, well, but there's just there's no quality control because, as you said, with Marcus Morrison, that's the sort of person I want to see fight. People yeah. that make it that are tough fighters. You want to see people, people like, like him, don't we? But, but people like Shannon Courtney and uh, Campbell Hatton. I'm not having a go at them and I'd say it to their face, but like some of these guys, they're just there because of who their dad is or because who their trainer is, you know, like... Well, look at it like was... this, right? They, 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 they turn the back on Marcus Morrison, right? Would they turn the back on Conor Ben if he got beat or Felix Cash? Probably not, no, because Conor Ben, you got the dad's name, plus he's... That's really, not uh... fighting for him, though, is he? His dad's not fighting, is he? He's, he's, not, he's not fighting or training him. Some... The problem is, but that's the way these matchroom people, that's where they think. They look at how famous you are. Plus, he's trained by Tony Sims. I think Tony and Eddie Hearn go way back. So it's like who you know of, isn't it? Yeah, well, all right, then moving on from them gimps. Then. Uh, Bell Hughes' book, have you seen the title of it? No uh, idea, no. Everybody's got a, a, a plan until they get punched in the face. That's what the title is, or something like that. Look, I thought he was going to disappear. He really gets up my nostrils, do you know? He's I back again, the famous... Yeah, not... that's what I thought. Coogan, I don't want any more cameras, Coogan. Coogan, I spell you why he's not disappeared. He's getting big porky and ulcer. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you see Joe Joyce going next then, Michael? I mean, Joe Joyce, um, I really I enjoyed the Dubois fight. Who can you fight next? The obvious fight is Usyk, but I don't know if Usyk's lot are going to want to fight him. He's dangerous. Um, who can he fight? Joyce could fight Usyk, Chisora maybe. Uh, who else you got? I think Joyce is, what, 36 now? Um, who can he fight? Huey Fury maybe? Yeah, you, Joyce against Huey is a good fight. Peter would take that in and out, beat for Huey. I mean, I think, I think Huey's taken a few losses, but I think Huey, Huey's getting off. To me, I think Huey's improving a lot. I think he can beat Joyce. You know, um, I think right now Huey's a bit of a quiet one, but yeah, I like Huey Fury. Uh, who else we got? I think Dylan's got the rematch against Pavet Kitten. Yeah, who do you think wins that, Michael? No, I, just, I won't be surprised if Povetkin does it again, you know. Um, but, apart, but the problem is Povetkin suffered from coronavirus, apparently. Oh, is he? No, that's not yeah, yeah. Didn't they say that he suffered and he's 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 feeling better now? But I think uh, that fight might not happen. You know, Dylan might White, Dylan White might have to fight somebody else. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think who could Dylan fight? I mean, you know, he calls everyone out, and then the fights never get made. Yeah, you know, I remember he was he was calling Ortiz an old man and this and that, but he never fought him, did he? Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a shame when they put Dave Allen with Ortiz, you know, put a novice in to get battered. Yeah, it's not that won't good for it. It's a stupid fight for Allen to take. He was never going to win the fight, and I, I think Eddie Eddie messed him around on pay, gave him a small amount of money. Apparently, yeah, it's madness, isn't it? 
Uh, where do you see Savannah Marshall going then? Do you think she'll fight Clarissa Shield at some point? I would imagine so. It's a logical fight. and I'm sure they both think they can win. Um, so yeah, I think when both, yeah, so long as both teams won it, yeah, I think that fight will happen. Yeah. Um, I think Savannah will beat her because Clarissa, like, she likes to get into people's heads. Like She's a bit of a bully. She, she yeah. gets into their heads. I think the one, oh, I can't remember her name, but the one she fought, the one that was trained by James Ali Bashir, yeah, um, yeah I guess she's a bit too small for Shields. And I think Savannah, Savannah's big, she's strong. So I think she's she's the only person that can sort of, um, that, that can stand up to Shields sort of mentally and physically. But yeah, I'll go for Savannah to win that. Yeah, yeah. I wish she's already dealt with her once. Yeah. Savannah, she'll do, she'll do we we are again. Uh, who do you see being heavyweight champion at World in three years from now? We all belts. Um, I mean, I want to say Fury. I think Fury is the best. Tyson Fury is the best. But if you're talking about that longer a length of time, you never know what could happen. You never know who could come out of left wing, but. Yeah, for for the foreseeable future, I think Fury's. Uh, yeah, you know, don't see Joshua beating him. Uh, don't see Wilder beating him. Uh, what's the French guy, Tony Yoka? Uh, don't see him. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably have to say Fury, uh, unless someone comes out of the Olympics or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to say Fury. What do you think about uh, Fraser Park? Do you think he should turn pro now? Because he's, he's knocking on a bit now, isn't he, GB team, isn't he? Yeah, he, he must. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's, he's been in the squad for however long. Yeah. I met... What year did I meet, Clark? I reckon he's probably the British yeah. level straight away if he turned pro in Fraser. You know? I do, honestly. Oh, no, I think he's good. I think yeah. he's good. I do, honestly. He'd be, if he fought Dave Allen, he'd beat Dave Allen, wouldn't he? All right. So let's say Dave's English level. If he beats Dave, yeah? Does he beat Dave in price? I think maybe, yeah. After a couple of fights, I think that's a good fight. There's so many matchups you, I could sit and give you 50 permutations, you know, off the top of my head, you know, from heavyweights in England. We are having to fly people in and mess about with all these quarantines and tests and all that shit, you know what I mean? No, but he can, they can put him in with, um, What's Dylan White's fight off? I forget his name, the heavyweight. Um, oh. Fabio Wardley. That's the one. I can see him beating Fabio Wardley. Yeah, Fabio Wardley's fighting Eric, the school teacher, Marina. Is it Marina? Melina. Marie. Melina. I was didn't he, didn't he... Marina then. <laughs> <laughs> was that, didn't Melina fail a drugs test or something, apparently? Yeah, yeah. He's pushing 40 year old as well. So I hope Fabio Wardley beats him. Uh, what do you think next for Callum Smith? Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't know what happened in the Canelo fight, but I, I don't know. Maybe the weights, maybe he's going to move up to light heavyweight now. Um, I still, I still think he's got fights in him. You know, um, I, I'm not someone I don't write fighters off after a loss, so I think he can still continue. Maybe move up to light heavyweight, see what fights there are there. You know, um, but he's still got time. You know, he's only had the one, the one loss to Canelo. Then the fight before that was John Ryder, wasn't it? Yeah. So maybe you could call it two losses. But yeah, I think Callum Smith has still got some fights out there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh... what do you think about Callum Johnson against Joshua Boatze? Um, yeah, you probably have to favour uh, Callum Johnson because um. Well, I mean, he's a strong guy. Punch is quite hard. I saw the bird to be a fight, put him down. Yeah. Um, see, this is the thing, though. The, the problem, the mistake people fans make, when matchroom backs certain fighters, like, they're the fighters that stick in your mind. Yeah. But, so what I'm trying I think they they support Buatsi, but I, I think Callum Johnson's probably better than Buatsi. But, you know, Joe Gallagher's maybe not the easiest person to get on with. For Matrium, not necessarily for me. So I, I just think Matrium are just sort of shutting, shutting Johnson out by the look of it. Yeah. But I, I think Johnson will beat Boatsy. Yeah, I do. I don't rate Boatsy now. We kept hearing all this, like these stories that he's like some roadman gangster, but he's not, mate. He's, uh, 
he's adding for Skid Row, in my opinion. Yeah, but all that road man, that stuff, it don't really mean anything. It's what you can do in the ring. I didn't think we, we were thinking it was going to be something like Michael Spinks or something, or weren't we? Or Jersey Joe Walker or something. Like, oh, who's this guy? And when it come down to it, they put him in with a, ge- a guy, probably scraping British level, and it were a life and death, wasn't it? Yeah, but again, I'd, I'd be on. I don't really trust anything matchrooms. Like, I don't mind Eddie Hearn. I think he's. You can get on with him as a person. I don't like, but... I don't like Eddie and Eddie. I don't like you. At least I'm <laughs> honest. Well, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't trust the word out of Eddie Hearn. I don't like him. Why don't you like him? I just think that he's taking Mickey out of it. It's just, I just, I just don't like him. I think he's greedy, mate. Honestly, I think he uses people. And some at matchmaking has been shocking, and he don't care about British fans or people that uh, fighting and the pack failing dope tests. They're not bothered about that. They're out for money. It's just one well, Eddie... contradictions, isn't it? Where's this beef sample? How can you start crying on TV about people dying in ring and then day after making fights with drug cheese? They're just so fake. You don't get any fake than that, and the public keep falling for it, don't they? No, what is with Eddie? Eddie's a very bright guy and he's very media savvy. He knows what he needs to say Eddie. and he knows he knows how to get away with it. Um, uh, what's a good example? He's like a politician. They'll tell you a certain thing. They know what to say in public, but behind closed doors, they do the opposite. But I, I, I wouldn't really trust the word that comes out of Eddie's mouth. But because he's the dominant man in British boxing, you know, he's... You know, he seems to be bankrupting Mr. Fisher. So, um... Eddie reckons he's an alpha male. Alpha male. Let me tell you this. No, he's not. Eddie, if I took Eddie Earn 28 days in one of Her Majesty's prisons like Armley or all, he'd know what an alpha male was. And in Eddie Earn, let me tell you. Do you know what I mean? Of course not. Yeah, of course not. No, but with Eddie, Eddie has it all his own way. He's the big money man. He's got all these media channels under his control. Yeah. Um, he's he's never faced adversity. Like what? What was it? What did he call his book? Relentless. Relentless. Yeah, but what do you? What Eddie do you mean Hearn relentless? is relentless. Yeah, but what what does that mean? Relentless. Like your dad. Starring Eddie Hearn, directed by Eddie Hearn, written by Eddie Hearn, copyright Eddie Hearn. <laughs> it's like, come on, like the guys. You, your dad's a millionaire. So what are you on about relentless? I mean, you've inherited the family business. It's, it's, Listen, I'm relentless with my with my with my past. So Eddie has never seen relentless, mate. Never seen it. Do you know what uh, I mean? Yeah. Who's the best well. trainer in British boxing at the moment, Michael? Oh, best trainer. Very difficult. Very subjective to answer. Um, yeah, is, yeah. I, I'll make a quick point. Something which people so much of the time fail to realise about trainers. I think sometimes you're only as good as what you have. Yes. <clears throat> so, all right, let's just say Adam Booth. So here's the perfect example. Go to Adam Booth. Booth, he's, he's the best. The best. Ooh, then, Rocky. He's right, let's just say Adam. Adam Booth. He's all right, Adam Booth. I mean, he's all right, but when you look at what he's done in boxing, I think he's a little bit overrated because Why you give him credit. Well, look, you look at who he had. He had David Hay and George Groves. Those, those were his two main clubs. Cruiserweight undisputed and heavyweight world title. And had six pay-per-views. I think that's all right, that, isn't it? No, I'll explain what I mean. Credit where credit's due. I, I respect Adam Booth for that. But remember, David Hay's a very naturally talented guy. He's a massive puncher. He was knocking guys out in the amateurs. He boxed at a high amateur level. Um, same with pros. David Hill was knocking people out. Same with George Groves. They're they're big, heavy-handed, explosive athletes. Yeah. Now, if you look at so if you can if you compare Hay and Groves to who does Booth have now? He's got Shannon Courtney and Josh Kelly. They're not really setting the world aflame. No. So I'm I'm, I'm so I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody. I respect all trainers. But all you anyway, can do. Anyway, in other in other news, water's wet. Right, we'll move on from that then. Uh, there you go. What what, what about uh, Beefy Smith, Chris Eubank Junior? Do you like that fight, fight, Michael? Does it get your juices flowing? Yeah, I don't mind it. It's an alright fight. Um, yeah, well, but maybe Liam Williams versus Eubank would be nice. Um, it just it'd be nice to see some domestic fights, some nice sort of. 
50 50 you know it'll be nice to see what, what would you like to see hey eh? what what domestic fights would you like to see oh i'd like to see beefy smith against uh eubank i'd like to see kel brook against beefy smith i'd like to see billy joe saunders against beefy smith i'd like to see all them fights i'd like to see canelo against Billy Joe, but that's not domestic, is it? But there's some yeah. some domestic one. I'd like to see Yui against Dylan White or Yui against Joe Joyce, something like that. I'd like to see Yui and AJ, to be honest. AJ against what? Yui. Hey. Why not? Yeah. yeah, why not? What about the um? I saw your videos about the old Rob Tebbert voice notes. Rob Tebber, recording conversations, Officer Officer Dibble. I don't, yeah. I, don't know what, I don't know what script is with that, but they've all fell out, haven't they? Tundi, Malcolm X and Tebbert, a.k.a. Bertie Smalls. They've all fell out, haven't they? Because Bertie put a, a voice text out on Twitter, didn't he, or something? Right, as, about as, low, as low as you can get, low life job, that, isn't it? No, I think so anyway, Rob, I mean, I can see it. come see me. Yeah, I can see it from both sides, but actually, I'll tell you the truth. I heard the voice note because um, a friend of mine called Ryan sent, sent, sent it to me on WhatsApp, so I heard it, and then Rob Tebbert deleted it. Um, so look, I can see it from both sides, but yeah. what, I would, what I would tell Rob Tebbert, I understand why he did it. He must have felt provoked, but just... You know, it's, it's a private message. Like it wasn't that serious. You, you, you should have just kept it to yourself. You know, if you if you yeah, didn't like it, right. if, if you didn't like it, just don't talk to Tunde again. But I've listen. I've seen worse in boxing. So yeah, you should have just just take it on the chin. Took it down it. anyway, didn't he? Within a, a few hours, you got the art of a fucking breadcrumb. So you, like you can't even. Yeah, you, you should have at least breadcrumb. Well, so it looks like he bottled it, but if it was me, I, I wouldn't. Like, you shouldn't have released the voice note. Just don't talk to Tunde again. I've seen that happen before, and you know, you, just you, you shouldn't have put it out there. I know, I know. Well, listen, it's been great having you on, uh, Michael. What's your oh, before we go? What's your what's the fight you want to see most in two thousand and twenty one? It won't happen, most likely, but. Has to be Fury Joshua. Right. Okay then. Well, listen. No problem. Well, listen. Have you got a Twitter or an Instagram handle or Facebook? Um. Yeah. You can. Um. I'll send you the links later if you want. You can put in your video. Um. Put no, in the just, video I'm, description. I'm not just going to mess oh. about just my tech. Guy. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just putting them um, out. I, introductions or anything. So I'm just going to put it out. Just so if you want to speak it on here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You oh, can just search my name. Uh, so my Michael Andemeskel, A N D E M E S K E L. Yeah, and what what's your Twitter? Uh, come under the same. Yeah, so if anybody can make a Tim Taylor what he said, that's his Twitter. Are you on Instagram as well, Michael? Yeah, same name. Same name. See, so my and how do we spell that again? Michael M I C H A E L. And the mescal, A N D E M E M E M A N D E M E S K E L. Right, there you go. Well, answers on a postcard to Michael. He's a uh, London based support, he's calling, aren't you, Michael? <laughs> yeah, mate. I'm just breaking balls with you, mate. It's all right, it's have, all a right. Good, have a good evening. Uh, keep in touch, and thanks for coming on. Just, Wait, thank uh, you your time. We, we, thanks for coming on for your day. We'll take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was... Uh, I forgot his name, though. Well, that was that bloke I've just had on there from Down Smoke. Uh, anyway, he, he's uh, a nice fella. I've met him a few times before. Uh, he seems all right. He knows he's boxing. Uh, so follow him, give him some view, give him some views, and uh, get him uh, get him out there. He's uh, he loves the sport. It's in, it's his passion. So all right. So right.
early one for me tonight. So thanks for coming on. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing.